What is good, my family, my family, my family? As you can see by the title today, talking about Chicago, man, Chirac, man. Specifically, I want to end off on the O Block 6 and FBG Duck. That whole situation and how that's turned out. Shout out to Kid Car 93. He actually asked me to talk about this situation. I wanted to use this opportunity just to talk about Chirac music over these past 12, 12, almost 13 years, man. I wanted to talk about the impact, the influence, mostly pertaining to my life, but also what I've seen in other places as well, man. So let's get right into it, man. So we can start off 2011, 2012, man. For me, I was in eighth, going on ninth grade around that time. And I can just remember like the first time I heard um, I don't like the first time I heard um, um, uh, 52 Bars by Lil Durk, the, um, the Play for Keeps, L.A. Capone and Rondo, Herbo and Bibby's first song, Kill Shit. Gotta, hey man, classic, classic, man. First time I heard those songs, the way they impacted my life. It was just a crazy time for me. Cause mind you, you know what I'm saying? You know, watch some of my other content. You know, I lost my dad when I was 12 years old, eighth grade going into ninth grade. Very critical time for a young dude because you're learning what, what a man is and the best place to get that from is gonna be your father if you do still have him. A lot of guys that don't have their father, they end up going to the streets, turn into whatever entertainers they admire or if they're lucky to have other strong male role models like I did through playing sports and stuff like that but yeah man it's just so crazy how they it was just so much so much beef in the music but it was the way it was it took over the culture like Chicago could have been so much bigger than what it was if it wasn't these two main sides, you got the old block 300, 600, and the 63rd guys, and, and the Lil J's, the Lil JoJo's of the world, the FB, FGB Ducks of the world. And I don't know um, a lot of like the under, like the guys who are like under the main guys, but I do know of some of them. So if you wanted like a deep dive on it, I'm pretty sure other guys can give you a way better deep dive when it comes to the beef. I just want to talk about the impact of the music, man. But you've seen it, man, just going through my first beginning years of high school, everybody wanted to dress like those guys. Everybody's using those guys' lingos. Everybody wants to go to the concerts, they're listening to the music, the style, like I said, the even down to the dreads and the way people was acting, whether it was like the little glowed up stance, everybody trying to pose like Chief keeps spreading their legs up, you know what I'm saying? Everybody even, you their Instagram handles and Twitter handles had something to do with like some Chicago type of style or lingo. And you did not just in my city in Richmond, Virginia, but you've seen this all across the United States and even across the world, man, you, you see it, man. Um, I, I got a video I still didn't post from Colombia, man. I'm talking to this kid and he, he loves Chief Keefe and he's literally from Colombia and stuff like that. So the musical, like the impact of the culture and music was just so big. And it, with, with that, it came good and bad, man. You see a lot of artists today, a lot of successful artists that were inspired by those Chicago guys. But we also seen so much loss, so much wasted potential because of the beefs in between it. L.A. Capone, he was one of my favorites. And yeah, he died. You've seen Rondo, um, number nine, got locked up shortly, well, around that same time. And it just was a lot of back and forth beef. When if those guys were more united, like if you think of how Atlanta is today, yeah, they have their little beefs and stuff like that. The only really big one that you can say, at least that's mainstream, is Young Thug and Lucci. But Outside of that, Atlanta kind of, everybody helps each other rather. You got all of these kids growing up in Chicago, these labels coming in, taking advantage of these guys, and it, they, and they're influencing the beef. They're not trying to 
get these guys in the studio together and stuff like that. Like, nah, they like the beef because behind these desks, there's dollars behind it. And it wasn't just 63rd and Old Block. You got the North Side guys, um, Pappy, you know what I'm saying? It was another one of my favorites, one of, one of my favorite guys. And he ended up getting killed too due to Chicago street beef, you know? And who's to say anybody's to blame for that? I mean, a lot of these guys don't have the right parents, even though they did have parents. Usually their parents was in the streets or in jail. So you could put blame on that. You gotta put blame on themselves for, for not. Mostly I would go towards the parents and just the culture and, and the, the government and all of that, all the stuff that's supposed to make a uh, proper environment for a kid to grow up in because a lot of those guys, you know, they just carrying guns because everybody else got a gun and they trying to make it to school and trying to make it back home. So many of them we hear about fights on buses, but near bus stops. Just not saying it's because a lot of these guys that were beefing, they sh they're not far from each other. You know what I'm saying even if you on the other side of the city, that's still relatively close. And we just seen so much violence still to this day going on in Chicago. So the problem is definitely bigger than the music, but I think the music did influence it, probably influenced it a little bit more in other places. I can say growing up where I where I grew up, yeah, it was cliques and gangs and all types of stuff like that, but it definitely got bigger. It definitely got bigger when, when the Chicago music, the drill music did come around. You had guys that wanted to be drill rappers. Even me at one point, man, I remember being in, um, this was after high school. So my freshman year of college, after a football season, or like really during, I was red shirted. Um, me and my homies were like, boom, well, I'm not playing in the games on the weekend. So let's, we're going on college tours. We're going to different schools and stuff like that. One weekend, we go to North Carolina a &T. It's their homecoming. Shout out G Ho. Everybody know about the greatest homecoming on earth. Shout out G Ho. It's lit. It's lit. And what happens to be down there is a Chief Keep concert. We end up paying to give VIP tickets. So we getting in early. We very close to the front. Club full of gangbangers, full of bloods. I think there's some other gangs in there. I'm not sure. But every section on the sides and then the stages in the middle. Every section on the sides, gang members. That's all it is. But we ended up having a good time, man. And um, I think a clip, of, a picture of that show is gonna be the thumbnail for this video. And um, yeah, a picture of that clip is gonna be the thumbnail for this video for sure. But um, yeah, that show right there, going to see Chief Keeps, the energy, the vibes. He had the whole, his whole 300, all his people on stage, Tato and all of them on stage. Man, that shit made me and my bros, that made us all want to, like, to rap. Some of them was already kind of trying, but that really got us all to want to be on some music stuff. Even me, I tried for a little bit, but I wanted to be more so on the business side and the production side. So I taught myself to make beats, and that was literally because of Chicago music. And, um, yeah, I, it wasn't just Chicago music that influenced my style our styles of course you know atlanta florida all these different places and dmv music and stuff like that but going to see a chief keep concert is what made us like damn like it made us feel like yo we can do that if they can do that we can do that that's that's the um energy we kind of got from it and i'm pretty sure that happened to a lot of people and it's not just chief keith i think lil wayne young thug a lot of um, these type of artists, like generational talents that had a big influence on a lot of people. They they did the same thing, but the way Chief Keef and, and FBG Doug, Lil Durk, all these guys from Chicago influenced the world, I think is unprecedented. unprecedented. You, know, you, you know the word I'm trying to say. I don't think it's been done before. Not At least not on that scale. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Now we get to the day Everything comes full circle. Lil Vaughn's gone. Like I said, LA's gone. So many people, um, Dirk the Lost people, a lot all these rappers, people on both sides. Lil J, we don't know what he's what he's got going on right now. But um a lot of a lot of stuff been going on on both sides. 
and we have today FBG Duck gets killed allegedly by the old block six. They got convicted for it and then footage of them chilling that whole day and going to do the shit and all that shit. But I still say allegedly, cause maybe they feel like they're innocent. At the end of the day, nobody, nobody won because it was always divisive. It was always, it was too much division. It was never, and it's still like, you see some of the guys today, like FYBJ man, he's trying to be a more so uni, unity type of dude, which is, it's good now and going forward, but if somebody was on either one of those sides and like, look, we got to end this, we can come together and we all can make millions of dollars. We all can be able to perform in our own city. So many of those guys can't even perform in Chicago because of all of the beef around it and stuff like that. If it, all it took was the Chief Keefs, the King Yellas, the Ducks, the... Um, it's the light skin dude, all, all, all these different guys, you know what I'm saying? All it would have took is some form of unity. And who's to say it would help the city? It probably would a little bit. I think Chicago has got a corruption problem. I think it's it's definitely bigger than the music. The music just just fueled, up, fueled a lot of the war, I feel like. But yeah, man, you see these guys, they did all that to kill Doug. Doug family hurt from that. And now six families hurt because they people is locked up. Not to mention all of the hundreds of families behind these beefs and behind these songs, all these people getting smoked in, in these different packs or everybody dissing the dead and this, that, and the third. <clears throat> and yeah, man, everybody lost, man. Nobody won in these situations. Everybody got, got fucked at wow. Us, we was doing this black on black beef. These people in these offices, these executives was counting millions and taking advantage of people. I think if they did focus more on the music and have their business and stuff right, and had the right people come into and guide them, probably would have been a little bit less deaths. And a lot of them would be a lot further along musically too, because they would have had more space to be more creative. They could have did less drugs and stuff like that because not to mention hey chicago again they that whole wave that culture they brought a lot of drug use to um kids and stuff like that and even like myself i said i was smoking weed a little bit but once i got out of high school stopped playing sports for real that's when i started like smoking backwards and stuff like that because they said why well, you smoking switches you gotta smoke backwards which yeah, the Swisher has nicotine too, but the bag was a cigar. It's not even supposed to be inhaled all the way. So, of course, it's going to be a harder hit of nicotine. A lot of people got nicotine addictions just from smoking cigars and stuff like that, putting their weed in cigars, and they didn't even know they was developing a nicotine addiction. So, yeah, man. All of that really, though, is just my experience with Chicago and just my thoughts on it all. To me, like I wish, it's just something to learn from going forward, man. It's, as black men today, those of us still alive, still here, we can and still enjoy the music if you want to. Me, personally, I don't really listen to too much drill anymore because it affects all those things, man, it affects your subconscious. Not so much as an adult when you already got your plan and purpose um, to focus on, but as kids, man, a lot of that stuff we shouldn't have been listening to, man. All that shoot 'em up, kill, kill. And countless people I knew made bad decisions based on this what I think a, a man does or this is what I feel like I'm supposed to do. So they disrespect me, I need to go kill them or I don't got no money, I let me go rob somebody. And who knows, maybe with or without Chicago influence, you know, it's not, they, Chicago wasn't the only group making gangsta music. And I, so I will say that, but definitely was a big influence, influenced my life in certain ways. Good, some good, some bad. But going forward, I definitely will, like my sons and stuff, I will tell them the truth. Y'all, even y'all, like, I'm gonna tell y'all the, the truth. To be honest, like I said, you sh shouldn't want to listen to too much drill music. You should be listening to some get money music. Listen to 
music from other cultures and other languages, listen to um, motivational music, workout music, uh, music about positive things, man. That's the, because those frequencies and vibrations, they will become a part of your personality and you won't even know what's happening, man. Definitely won't know what's happening. Like I said, as far as the O Block 6, that's like the, the main purpose of this video is supposed to be about. I just think it, you know what I'm saying? He's still cool in Chicago. He know his beef. He know these certain things happen. They was still dissing the dead. And it just, it just is what it is at this point. But as far as us, y'all watching this, me and myself, it's just situations to learn from. Like, let's move through this world with love, unconditional love and unconditional gratitude. And a lot of other things will fall into place. You'll create certain energies around you that's really protecting you from a lot of that bullshit. You can live in your own bubble and not have to worry about, um, people having animosity and stuff and, and then if you are living as a good person because i can say like me and myself i didn't did certain shit to people where someone might want to try to harm me today for that shit and that's something i gotta live with something i gotta be prepared for but also something i can easily avoid just by not being in places where i know okay this is where the broke guys from my from my um past probably be hanging out and stuff like that or I said, but it's just going forward. And if I continue to be a good person and not fucking everybody over, then a lot of those things, a lot of those energies would just fade. You know what I'm saying? So do right, be a good person, take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Let me know how Chicago influenced your life. Let me know. Um, just let me know something in the comments. Let me know. Um, Shit, what you want me to talk about next? You know, hit me up on Instagram, DM, YouTube, I mean, Twitter, all that, or X, it's X now. Back in the day, see, Chicago was, in 2012, it was, it was still Twitter, it was still Twitter, Twitter was popping. Those guys was even beefing on Twitter, going back and forth, and still killing each other, like, it's just so crazy. Another thing is, I don't think we've seen a, a Rico charge out of Chicago. I don't know how their laws work, but that's kind of crazy as well, but... And I'm glad we have it. I'm glad we have it. You know, Sosa here in Cali, Dirk doing his thing in Atlanta. We want to see these guys that we do have left be better, evolve. That's the biggest thing. We want to see these guys evolve and become something better, become something greater than just, ah, uh, yeah, we used to rap about this shit. And we still rapping about this shit. Like, nah, let me hear in your songs how you evolve and how your life is going how you dealing with certain situations and how you becoming a man, man. As always, I love y'all.